Before we start, if you don't know what this mod is that I'm talking about, there's a link in the description for where I made the mod and went over it. But anyway, in this video, we're going to go over the problems, the steps to install it, and then the settings for the free version, the paid version, and then how modders can implement this into their own mod. The first big problem is BeamNG has hundreds of tires. I don't want to have to remake every single individual tire and do all the research for every individual one. So that is going to be up to you to tune yourself. And a generic thing means there's going to be issues like this. But we're going to go over how to fix that today. That is expected behavior for a lot of tires. And because there's more nodes, that's going to be more nodes touching the ground, meaning more friction. Because nodes are not anything to do with the beams or the triangles in this regard. It's just literally nodes touching things like the ground. Also, your tires might end up soft and wobbly. That comes down to your tune, and there is just some limitations. And yes, node weight on a tire is actually a bad thing and is something that you really don't normally want for racing. However, that is a trade-off, and for some people, they're willing to make that trade-off, and for some people, it won't matter, for instance, rock crawling, potentially. Also, for weird reasons with the Patreon version, where you can do the front and rear separately, the semi-truck does this weird thing where all tires are at the rear. Weird, but okay. And finally, the performance hit. There's some stuff that we're working on, but for now... If you're not using the mod, deactivate it in the mod menu. First thing we may want to go over is how to actually get the mod. At the moment of me recording this video, it is not live on the repository. And if you're watching and it is available there, you can just go into the game's menu, go into repository, and then search for it. It'll be high poly wheels. Yes, spelt incorrectly with two L's because I'm dyslexic and I started it that way and I'm going to keep it that way. Otherwise, if you're getting it from another place, like for instance, I've uploaded it to Overtake GG, but they are really slow, but it's also on Modland. There will be a link in the description for the free version. However, if you want to support me and maybe send some money my way, there's a Patreon link in the description for the full version. Either way, once you've downloaded the mod, you can just take it and then put it into your mods folder. You can find your mods folder by going into the mods directory here and then open mod folder. Now I've got it and I've unpacked it, so it's right here. Should be the same on Windows and Linux as I'm using the Linux native version at the moment. Then to put the mod on, you'll go up here to additional modification and then you'll put on your mod. Now, yes, I am aware that the tires are really weird looking. Unless you make the tires really stiff, I at the moment have not been able to find a solution for this particular problem. It's up to you whether that's worth the trade-off. If your tires explode on spawn, the first thing you're going to want to do is to reduce the overall stiffness. Currently, the free version is set to default to minus 20, and that should be good for most tires, but not all tires. You will have to tune individually for your tires. Also, keep in mind, if you increase other values in here, sometimes that can reduce the stability again, and you may have to reduce the overall stiffness instead. So you're raising some things, but then dropping everything down, raising, dropping. It's whatever fits your needs. Once you've gone in and made all your settings changes, you could save the entire vehicle, including the tires settings that we've set here by going into save then typing in whatever you want to call this say for instance some car hit save then over in vehicles we can go to our d series and we see that we have some car saved if you don't see this then you'll have to go over here to display options and then down here to include standalone PC files. Now for the free version, I've made it a lot simpler by removing some of the more ambiguous settings and I've taken away the front and rear differentiation. That's not great for drag cars, but for most use cases, it'll be fine. And if you do have a drag car, just reduce the overall stiffness or maybe don't put pizza cutters on the front tires. Going over the settings, this one will change the weight of the tire nodes. I made it so if you reduce the weight, it will reduce the overall stiffness a little bit to help compensate so you can change the weight just statically by pressing the number. 25% of the weight. There. So then you would have to drop the overall stiffness and apply. And there you go. But you are going to have a much softer tire. Now, if you want to look at your tire, you could press Control T to see it, and then Control D will toggle it on and off. For now, I'm going to undo those, and we'll skip these to the last. The radial stiffness will change 
the stiffness of all of the beams along this axis. The tread corner stiffness will change the stiffness of some beams that are hidden on the inside of the tire. We turn it up, we'll start seeing them in here, and it's these beams here. That will make the corners of the treads more stiff. Now for the tire wall crossbar. You'll see some crossbars in here. If you have a tire that keeps exploding anyway, try increasing that one. However, keep in mind that this will make it so then the tire won't want to bulge as much under the tire being compressed that way, but it'll keep the tire also fairly linearly related to each other. That is something that's going to be up to you. I'm going to undo that. And then the wall stiffener is for in here with these beams here. So that will make the beam across here not want to change angle as much as what it is, which will stop it from expanding at high speeds on the top side and everywhere else. And then on the bottom side, it'll stop it so much from being compressed under the weight of the vehicle. Some tires have very stiff walls and some don't. That is up to you to decide and to figure out. It's going to come down to your use case and how you like it. You can get presets from other people though. Then we have friction compensation. Because we now have more nodes, you're going to find that the friction is not going to be the same value all the time. Because as you can see, more nodes are going to be touching the ground compared to what it used to. I have tried to compensate for this, but you may find that the results aren't exactly what you wanted and you may want more friction or less friction. The amount of friction that you want is going to be up to you. And how realistic you want to be or not realistic, your choice. Now, these two cheating little ones. I'm not a big fan of these, but I find that sometimes it really just helps to make a tire more stable and move back and forth a lot less under lateral loads. If we have a look inside here and press Control B to bring up some beams, we could turn on the anti-bulge and anti-squish, and then you'll see that it'll create a lot of beams connecting to a lot of different things. That is a lot of beams. So if we press Control B a few more times, we can see the type, and these are what are called anisotropic beams. So they won't act the same in the same direction, though they are the same beam. If I turn this off, you'll see that the beams don't go away. They are still there. You have to have both of them off for them to go away. I am not against using the tread anti-bulge and tread anti-squish settings, but keep in mind that you only really do that as maybe a fine-tuning thing, but it is, once again, entirely up to you. And that wraps up the tuning settings. Now we're going to move on to the Patreon version. Now with both versions, this is going to be a heavily work in progress type mod. For now though, we'll find that we have a few different options here. This one has less settings because you won't be able to divide the wheel width up because currently on this version you can't divide the width up because there's going to be a little bit more work to do with that. But I do still have the original ones here if you want with an additional square wall setting, which I'll give you a quick example of. You can see here that that's got a square sidewall compared to this version with triangles. What's the difference? Not actually a whole lot, but I kind of wanted to put it in there anyway. There is one setting in these two though that is available here that is not in the other ones, and that is the tread subdivisions. As we go here, this will be coming to the other version, but if we hit seven for instance, you'll see that we have seven subdivisions here. But because this is going to be the version we're going with forwards, we're going to go back to the three div version. And, well, yes, it's a lot less stable. Like always, change the overall stiffness. I like to go at about 20% if it's moving around this much. Then... It's calmed down. Now, compared to the free version, what you're going to notice first off is the fact that there's a lot more settings. And a lot more settings. There is a front and a rear section. Be mindful not to make accidental mistakes and then try to make a bug report. We don't have the tread subdivisions anymore, but we do have still a lot of the same settings. We can change the weight overall to change the node weight. I have set it up so then the reducing the weight will make the tire a little bit softer, which will help it stay stable, but that is not perfect. If we reduce it now, say 14%, we'll see that it becomes unstable. However, you could probably then rectify that by just reducing the overall stiffness a lot more. And look at that, it's working again. But now you've got a really soft tire and it's still not going to be entirely stable. I'm going to undo all of these settings now. We're gonna leave anti-bulge and anti-squish for now because those ones are a bit more of a fine tuny cheating sort of setup. And we're gonna move on to something like tire wall bulge. You may notice that this sticks out a lot more than the actual tire. So we can go in and reduce this tire wall bulge if we want by let's say two centimeters. And now it's in just a little bit more, but you may notice that the peak of the tire wall does not really line up with where you think it would be 
I'm going to guess here that we maybe want it to be a little bit smaller. So that is what the middle radius will do. And once we've set that, we can see that it is now a lot smaller. But, you know, too much. So 0.35. And as you can see, that's how that works. It just changes the radius of this inside circle. The next one is tire resolution. Keep in mind that this will add more nodes in, but it'll also give you more friction and make things a little less stable. By default, it is set to 16, so we can count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then it's mirrored, obviously, on this side to make 16. We can turn that all the way up to 32 if we want, but it's not going to be great. So, more resolution, more friction. Oops, stop, there we go. But also more problematic though you could reduce the overall stiffness for now though we're just going to keep that default the radial stiffness will change the stiffness of the beams in this direction now for press ctrl b you can see it's these beams here that will be changing next is the tread corner stiffness if we press ctrl b a few times we'll bring up the type of beam and in here we'll see the different types of beams that exist in here including these which are a part of the radial stiffness if we turn up corner stiffness say to 75 percent we'll see new beams pop in down to here and that will make the corner not want to change the shape of the corner that it's in this will reduce bulging when we go at high speeds on everything except the bottom patch and then on the bottom patch it'll help prevent any sort of squish along here. There is ways to reduce the stiffness this way, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now I'm going to undo that, and instead we're going to turn on crossbar, and then we'll see a crossbar come across here. There. If you find that your tire is popping on spawn, reducing stiffness is not doing exactly what you want, you may want this setting. However, keep in mind that that is holding the tire's sidewalls together in a beam of their own, meaning that it won't squish as much, say for instance if you drop the car on the tire. It's not particularly realistic, but for some purposes and for some people, they might find it beneficial. That is entirely up to you, your taste, and whether you think it actually aids you. Sometimes you don't need the tire wall to bulge, or not bulge that much your choice. I'm going to undo that and then in here we see that we have a gray beam here. That is an L beam much like a lot of the other ones here and what that particular beam is making this not want to change shape this way as mentioned earlier. If we scroll down a little bit that is a wall stiffener. You can make this squish less which is more realistic for more modern tires and you can make it softer for older more pillowy tires. Generally, tread corner stiffness and wall stiffener are the ones that I'll use a lot more than the rest. Now, if you have a lot of extra traction because you've created a lot of extra nodes, you can go in here and change the friction compensation. This is going to be entirely up to you and how realistic you want to be. If you just wanted to make your tires super grippy for whatever reason, you could just turn that up to 200% your choice. Same with the sliding friction compensation. There's a difference between friction in the straight line and when the nodes are sliding. Same thing will be applied for when braking and when accelerating, doing burnouts and whatnot. That is what sliding friction compensation is for. Because I don't want to go through and have to program hundreds of tires, yeah, you're going to have to be your own watcher to make sure that you're not abusing these. Or if you do abuse these, then have fun with it. Okay. Now we're getting on to the modding section of the video. There's two things you can do. One, you can just make it a thing that is available on your vehicle, or two, you can make your own custom tires, and we can talk about that in a second. Because I had to go in and name every individual vehicle that I know to make it a slot type that's available, I've had to limit it to just cars that I know, which is the standard vehicles, and the automation cars. However, I have made a custom slot type. You could add any of these to your vehicle to allow it to take those mods, but right at the end here, we've got high poly wheel mod. What we can do is we can make a copy of another slot type here, we can put the name in, and then we can rename whatever you want this to be. And there you have it, we have ourselves just a new slot in there, and it should take our wheels. You can even make a default spawn in with it by putting it in there. But you're a mod maker, I'm pretty sure you know how to do slot stuff yourself, I just thought I'd let you know that it's in there. Now, if you want to make custom tires, we have two options. If I go into the common directory and then scoot down to the tire section, open myself up a tire, I can then go to the high poly wheel section and there is no need then to share this J beam, which I'd rather if you didn't share the J beam, because all you would need specifically is this. You would find out whether you're editing a front or a rear tire, then you would go in, look to the end, see whether you want the front or the rear category, 
then back here, because we're working on the front, we're gonna copy all of these, and over in the tire, if it doesn't have variables, you can paste the whole lot. Otherwise, it's gonna go in here, under here. Then, also, be sure to copy this versions thing, which is related to the triangle walls, the square walls, original stuff, and then the new three tread dev thing. Just make sure you've picked the right one. You could check by checking the name here, and you would also paste that in. Then, you would hard code your values into here. Just be mindful if there is nothing in these quotes here. This is going to be a little bit tricky, because this is showing a zero to two value with a default of one, on the overall stiffness, but in beam and G, we see that overall stiffness is in a percentage this way. Minus 20 doesn't fit between zero and two. Just know that 0.8 would be minus 20% sort of stuff. Then back in here, we do have this little section here. You don't need the final quote or the beginning quote, just this section would we'll go back to the tires, go to the end, and then put in here just before the curly bracket, that. Now, there's a few problems with doing it as a variable sort of way. I'm not sure how it would overwrite if somebody puts on the high poly wheels and then it tries to fight with your version of variables. My preferred version would be if you hard coded it in. It gets a little bit more messy though. If we have a look in the lower and I've got my three div one here, but it's in all of the other ones. I've actually got this set up to check for hard values first. And if it's not that, then I'll do this. So. I'm gonna copy all of these and into the tire that we've got just inside of pressure walls. It doesn't particularly matter where, maybe just make a extra section here and call it custom high poly tires. This is just a comment. That's what the two slashes at the beginning mean. And then we're gonna start pasting this stuff in. So I'm just gonna hit control V on that. Then I'm gonna copy the beginning here. That'll make life a little bit easier and paste that in there. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste that in there. The final thing to do is to copy the middle section here, paste that in there, then we'll put in our values. However, at this point in time, we still need to grab this versions and put that under variables. Just make sure you've got the right one. And in here, you would put your values in as they have been set up via here. Keep in mind, once again, that if there is nothing in these quotes right here, that is going to be a percentage thing. Work around it how you will. Now, if you have neither of these or a variable and they don't have the high poly wheels thing put on, if we have a look at the code, we'll see that it'll default to just some default values. So you don't have to be too concerned about forgetting to put things in. What most of this stuff is doing, like the sidewall, the anti-bulges, the expat full stiffness and all that, is going down here to the beams section and it's just multiplying things here, which means you could just go into a tire, for instance, and just change the wheel side beam spring, which is right here, and you can set the values yourself. So you don't necessarily have to go in and change a whole bunch of different things if you just wanna work with the default settings. Just be mindful of how everything works together and you can go double check in the lower to see how things are interacting. It's not overly particularly hard. With our side options, we could see that we have, it's times by full stiff, then here with my pyramid options, it's got anti-squish and full stiff. Then we have anti-bulge and full stiff on the other options. And now well, that wraps up the video. If you want, I don't mind if you modify the lower code for your own likings and whatnot. Maybe just don't redistribute willy nilly my coding work. I would not like that. And if you do use it in your stuff, I don't particularly want other people selling my things because then that becomes a bit shit with like when people sell mods on Patreon. It, it, it could be a bit shit for like, but then again, I am pro consumer. So if you paid for it, then you own it. I am not a Eula type person. It's your choice. Please don't. As for the future of this mod. Yeah, I didn't get the 100,000 likes that I said I wanted, but it got enough views and enough attention that I'm gonna readdress this mod just a little bit more. There's a few things I wanna do. I'm gonna do maybe some showcase videos where I show using it and whatnot. Just having a little bit of fun. I think because I know how the mod works very well, I would be probably the best to do some showcases of fun things like showing real tire deformation for things like drag tires. But for now though, I would like to thank my channel members. You guys are awesome and also thank you to everybody on Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. And in the interest of transparency, I have left how much money I earn at the top there so then people can 
be nosy if they want to be nosy. Hopefully, this will help me pay for repairs for termite damage that I found in my house recently. Oh. I'm gonna have to go to my mummy and daddy and ask for a loan. But for now, though, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.